Hello, I'm Ryan. And I'm Dawson. And in today's show, we're discussing men's health and Movember, the month where a man starts off a clean shaven and grows a moustache all month long, garnering support from friends and family in the form of donations that go towards cancer research. We also have a very exciting interview with a very Australian folk rock band called The Beards. Later on, we'll be hearing from the Lincoln public about Movember. We will have Angie Parton from the United Lincolnshire Health Trust in the studio to talk to us about prostate and testicular cancer and other health issues which affect men. We'll also be sharing some interesting beard facts with you during the show. But first, to start us off with the show, we have a song from The Beard, who we'll be hearing from later with a phone interview, and this song is called Growing, Growing a, a Beard. beard. of time till we make you ours and we'll wait here as long as we have to sooner or later you'll show up here eventually we'll all have big beards yeah we're all growing a beard a man's face should never be bare we just want some facial hair We're anticipating, yeah, everyone's waiting for beards And when we have beards People will like us They'll come up to us and say, hey, that's a nice beard And that was the Australian band The Beards performing Growing a Beard. You're listening to The Five Cock Shadow on Siren 107.3 FM. Over the next seven minutes or so, we will have an interview with Johan Beardraven of The Beards, who you just heard. Uh, We will hear their opinion on Movember and men's health issues, as well as a lot of humorous beard-related stories. So here it is. Okay, so on the show today, we have Johan from The Beards. Thank you for joining us, Johan. Uh, It's my pleasure. Thank you. And can you tell us a bit more about The Beards? Uh, I can tell you about The Beards. We're a band from Australia and we like beards so much that we only play songs about beards. 
That sounds incredible. And how good it is to have a beard. We're pro beard. Yeah, we, we certainly aim to encourage everyone to grow a beard. Excellent. Well, our show is basically promoting facial hair, but it's also a lot about um, raising awareness for men's health issues. We're talking a lot about Movember. Um, what, what's your mm. opinion on Movember? Uh, look, from a facial hair perspective, um, I don't like it at all. Uh, I think I think moustaches are actually a bit of an insult to beards. Right. Because you know, you, you, you're saying, here's my facial hair, but I'm going to shave most of it off. You know, And then they get to the end of Movember and they have to shave the whole thing and it just... Uh, yeah, I um, I don't like it. I, I I appreciate what they're doing for men's health, but you know, I feel I feel we should switch the whole thing to uh, December beard. And how how December would you better beard, promote yeah, well, yeah. December beard as opposed to November? How would you better promote it and make that better? Uh, well, people are going to see the beard, and and clearly it's just going to they they're just going to realise how much better beards are. I think that's the key is is, is uh, getting your bearded faces out there. But of course, in, in Australia, where you are, December, for us it's very Christmassy, very wintry, but for you it's summer. How does the beard mm. fare in the summertime? Yeah, it looked pretty good. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, like, people would assume that it gets hot and sweaty, but I never really have a problem, a problem with that. In fact, you can actually splash water onto your face and your beard will actually retain uh, moisture and, and have like a little, be- uh, a little a beard towel around your face to, to help keep you cool. You know, just just one of the many perks of having a beard. Yeah, and going back to the band, I mean, obviously your songs are all about beards. What actually inspired your songs other than beards itself? It must be hard to make up new ideas for every song. You have two albums, I'm aware. Yeah, we, we do have two albums out, and we're working on the third. Um, it's really not that hard to get inspired. Like, we all have such good beards, you know, so if, if, if we ever need inspiration... We can just sort of catch up for a writing session and like look into each other's beards, you know, uh, stroke each other's beard if necessary for inspiration. Great, yeah. Uh, we've actually found it. Yeah, it's 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 not too not too hard to get inspired by beards. I and think, and uh, when did you grow your first beard? Uh, I've had my first beard when I left school, so eighteen or nineteen. I think I just got straight into it, you know. Yeah, and is your current beard still your first beard? Uh, we did shave them off once for a film clip, actually. Uh, that was the only time. As yeah, let's see it. Yeah, uh, it was a bit of a dark day, really, for all of us. It's not very good. It's right. bad. We look yeah. bad. And what would be your proudest beard moment? It's always encouraging, and this has happened a few times when we we do a gig, and you know, some beardless guy will come to us afterwards. You know, they'll they'll have the nerve to approach us and they'll <laughs> say to us, you know. Uh, I've been really inspired listening to you guys sing about beards. I'm going to go and grow a beard. And we all say, yeah, whatever, man. You know, we don't yeah. really like talking to beardless people. And But then a few weeks later or a few gigs later, we'll do a show and he'll come back up to us, a guy, and he'll say, look, I've grown a beard. And when we see that, we've really made a difference in people's lives. I think that's the most inspiring thing, yeah. Definitely a bearded highlight. And what's your opinion? I mean, obviously you don't agree fully with Movember because it doesn't fully um, promote beard growth. Mm. But... Mm. Surely some beard is better than no beard at all? Yeah, look, we, we don't mind. I mean, we want you to have a, a, a full good beard. I mean, we don't really rate moustaches, but there are there are some good-looking moustaches out there. I will give them that. And mm-hmm. some good goatees as well, like some really big, long, thick goatees. Great. What's well, yeah. my, my, current, my current trend at the minute? I see, yeah. I could tell you had a beard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> your voice. You're so kind. Yeah. And coming into December... <laughs> um, What's your what's your opinion on Santas that have fake beards? Yeah, look again, a fake beard, uh, while it's it's hiding your beardless face, is is I guess better than nothing. So look, it, it is a time where you do see uh, more beards around. Firstly, through the Santas, and then obviously, people who go on holiday, the first thing they do is they, you know stop shaving and get quite a bit of stubble over the Christmas break as well. And we also have a lot of females that tend to wear fake beards to our gigs too, which is again is is better than nothing. Yeah, I was going to ask that. What, what's the role of females with a beard? And um, what, what would be your opinion on a woman that could naturally grow a beard? I believe that uh, um, the, the yeah, longest hot, female yeah. beard in history is, f- is 14 inches. Something like that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, look, um, we think that's the ultimate in a woman. A woman with a beard. Uh, very hard to find. If, if girls can't have beards, then we just ask that they be, be accepting of men with beards mm-hmm. and also that they wear a fake beard at all times. That seems fair enough. Mm, yeah, I think so, yeah. And what would be your favourite beard in history? 
Oh, gee, there's been some good ones. Uh, Charles Darwin's was, was pretty good. Uh, you can't go past Jesus, I guess. You know, very famed beard. He's quite a marvellous beard. In fact, they say that his beard gave him most of his magical powers. But, uh, yeah, look, there's, there's, there's so many good ones. I don't know if I can pick a favourite. And although the beards aren't specifically involved with Movember and they're actually almost morally opposed to Movember because it doesn't promote beard growth enough, are the beards involved yeah. in any other charity events or concerts for men's health, or have they been? Uh, no, no, not really. We uh, It hasn't something been something that we've uh, really thought about, I guess, or, or been approached about. But certainly, you know, a, a, a healthy man produces a, a healthy beard, so we certainly um, we certainly would support men's health in any other way that we could. Well, we've, we've got, um, throughout our show, we're scattering through some beard facts and um, trying to <laughs> yeah. um, just give more information and more facts about beards. Have you got any beard facts of your own to share? Uh, yeah, I did hear um, from someone with a beard uh, at one of our concerts that uh, the beard keeps growing after you die. Really? I was pretty impressed by that. Yeah, nothing can stop the beard. That's incredible, actually. Even, that is actually incredible. Not even death. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's true, but the guy had a beard, and you can always trust a man with a beard. Well, that's true, yeah. Yeah. Do you do you have the the, the the opinion that bigger is actually better? Uh, not necessarily. No, no, I don't think that's really fair. Um, but certainly, a, a, it's easier to be more impressed by a by a, a big beard. You know, your 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 ZZ Top oh, style. Oh, that, that's hard to beat. You know, you just can't go past it, can you? Just a good beard. And um, beard. as for the beards, um, do you have any any? Obviously, you have, you're working on a new album at the minute. Do you have any? Um... We are actually, yeah, yeah. We we actually have been have been uh, working on some new stuff, uh, looking to record an album next year. Well, we look uh, forward we to that. Do you have any information about yeah. where our listeners could find out more about the beards? Yeah, definitely. Uh, go to thebeards.com.au. Um, so yeah, the .au on the end. Yeah, that'll that'll take you. Uh, I think it takes you to our MySpace, and you can link to our Facebook and. You can have a listen to us, to our stuff. We got some video clips up on YouTube as well. Fantastic! And what would be your personal um, favorite song that you that you perform yourselves? Uh, we've just recently finished a song where we say the word beard thirty eight times, I think, which was a record, wow. a record amount of beard. So I think at the moment that one that one's my favorite. Well, we look forward yeah. to hearing that. Mm, yeah, should be good. Well, Johan, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, thank you for yes, taking you. time out of your busy schedule and your band practice to speak with us. Uh, it's always nice to speak to a to another bearded man. So thank you no very much. Bearded all. blessings to you. That's Johan Beardraven. You're listening to Five O'clock Shadow on Siren One Hundred Seven Point Three FM. And that was Brian interviewing Johan of the Beards. And again, if you wish to find out more about the Beards, please visit the Siren FM website at www.sirenonline.co.uk or the Beards' own website at www.thebeards.com.au where there are links to purchase their music and their merchandise. Now, uh, a lot of people don't know what Movember is. Uh, we'll hear what the people of Lincoln had to think on uh, uh, later, but now our reporter Miles has kindly spied us with some basic information. Movember, more commonly known as November, began in 2003 as a bit of a joke, trying to bring back the dodgy 80s moustache and raising a little bit of money in the process, never dreaming that that little strip of face fur would go into a global sensation. Men, known as Mobros, start the month clean-shaven and use the time to try and grow the most outlandish moustache possible. While females, known as Mo Sisters, also serve an important role by recruiting the Mobros, helping to raise funds and attending Movember events. Worldwide, the funds raised go to vital research in prostate and testicular cancer. And that was Miles giving us a little information about Movember. Uh, we're lucky enough today to have Angie Parton, a clinical nurse specialist uh, from United Lincolnshire Health Trust, in the studio with us to give us some information about men's health. Thank you for joining us, Angie. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, so firstly, Angie, can we ask you, uh, what do you actually do at the United Lincolnshire Health Trust? I work as a clinical nurse specialist. Um, my role is as a key worker for cancer patients. Mm -hmm. um, that 
involves um, seeing patients through investigations and diagnosis, supporting and counselling them through treatment and health and well-being post their treatment and yeah. uh, continued uh, long lifelong um, health. We would hope. Mm -hmm. right, um, so, who does uh, prostate t uh, and testicular cancer usually affect? Testicular cancer affects the younger generation. We would be looking at an age group between 20 to 44, and particularly we would advise um, gentlemen who have a family history of testicular cancer to be more vigilant and aware of, of their uh, um, health. Um, prostate cancer affects an older age group, although it's not age-specific, usually from around about 50, but can affect younger people. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, so if any of our listeners are maybe concerned that they don't know what to look for, can you give some of the uh, basic information of symptoms that usually uh, resemble prostate or testicular cancer? Looking at testicular cancer first, what we would recommend is that all gentlemen do self-examination of the testes. It's a, a disease that presents itself um, sort of quite quietly. You can get some pain and swelling, um, but and on self-examination, if you find anything that looks like a hard P-shape um, lump in the testes, then you need to to get help straight away. Mm -hmm. um, prostate cancer, if you have a family history, again, it's advisable to have a blood test done for prostate antigens or just to be aware of your urinary symptoms. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so should any of the listeners be worrying about this because they may have found something? Uh, what help is available for them, obviously? There's quite a lot of help available on the internet. However, we would advise that you use that quite cautiously and go to recommended sites like the NHS, Macmillan or prostate cancer charities. There's also help available from your um, local health um, GP centres. There's also Macmillan help available at Boston and Lincoln hospitals. They both have a pod in their reception areas in main entrance um, for outpatients as well. Uh, now, obviously, you've heard of Movember, and uh, now that it's becoming better globally known, uh, being a huge benefit towards cancer research, uh, what's your actual view on Movember? I think anything that helps is to raise the profile of men's health um, and makes men more aware and perhaps absolutely uh, more um, confident to come forward and realise that they're not the only patients or, or the only people with problems is good. And we do very much rely on charities to help us to provide research and evidence-based best practice and move services forward. So it is a really good thing. Ah, right. Um, uh, have you, uh, you know, with the, uh, with the Health Trust, have you been in any way involved with Movember over the years? Or? Oh, unfortunately not. Um, I think Movember is something that's only just <coughs> becoming quite well-known globally, and particularly in Lincoln. Um, we have been in involved with the prostate cancer and prostate awareness, um, but I think it's something that we will be looking at helping to promote and, uh, and advertise this, uh, this coming year. Uh, does the United Lincolnshire Health Trust actually have any links to any other cancer charities uh, or cancer research? Like, oh, well, sorry, like Cancer Research UK. We we don't actually have links with them. We do very much rely on these people to help us to provide services, oh, right. and we do ha rely on um, charitable funds to to deliver some of our services, which in some ways is quite sad um, that we have to do that. But people are very happy to support us um, that. But we can't actually link ourselves with individual charities. And uh, lastly, we're asking uh, our guest a beard-related question. So, who's your favourite uh, beard, of, like beard of history celebrity, or my my favourite bearded celebrity would be somebody probably not not particularly well known as a gentleman called Cy Cranstrom, who's a um, a rock and roll and street singer from London. Oh, nice. um, uh, who's sort of really just taken the rock and roll scene by storm in this country at the moment. Um, but I think um, my overall celebrity would have to be Santa Claus because he was really good there to me go. this we year. There we go, we knew it would go. We saw that coming, we saw it coming. Um, but thank you very much, Angie, for coming in. And obviously you're from the United Health Trust of Lincolnshire uh, at Louth Hospital. You're at based? Louth Hospital, yeah. I'm based, yeah. Um, and... That's, thank you for interviewing. Thank you very much, Angie. Thank you, thank you very much. If you want to find out any more about the United Lincolnshire Health Trust uh, or Movember or indeed the Beards, uh, make sure you visit the Siren FM website at www.sirenonline.co.uk where we have links for each of these groups. Earlier, our avid reporter Miles found out what the people knew about Movember, but now here we're going to find out what they think about facial hair. There's been a dramatic increase in facial hair in Lincoln in the last month. Why do you think this is? I guess it's probably just a trend. Because it's winter and people grow more hair to keep themselves warmer. 
I think it's just to like drill in the fact that I can't grow any. Personally, I usually think it's down to the fact that it's winter and the cold weather with a beard keeps your face quite nice and warm. Um, that's specifically why I've grown out. I wouldn't say for sure, it's not something I thought about. Um, it's actually for an event called Movember. What do you think Movember is all about? Um, I've seen Movember advertised, but I've no idea what it was actually about. Actually, I think I have, but I don't know what it is. I have no shaving mo November, basically. I had which I got berated for ignoring. I, I, I didn't shave during November, so I guess I, I won. <laughs> I haven't saved, shaved since September. I trimmed it since September, but only twice. I usually trim about once a month. What's your favourite type of moustache or beard? The goatee. Um, I'm not really into uh, facial hair, so probably no. Probably back. Uh, nice. <laughs> people who can grow proper handlebars are pretty impressive. Um, but other than that, I don't know, I think a proper full, so just a full long beard and having a proper under, <coughs> under beard as well, where you've got to go in proper, properly uh, underneath so you can get some real length is probably, probably what I'd say is most, most sort of famous. And who is most famous for their facial hair? Bin Laden? <laughs> <laughs> Santa Claus. Well, in festive spirit, I want to say Santa, but, um... <laughs> Jesus? Jesus, I suppose. But then again, it depends on which pictures you him, because some of them he's clean shaven. Yeah. Um, gonna have to go with Brian Blessed, just because he has an amazing bushy beard. I would have thought it was Brad Pitt currently, but I think he's shaved it off again, hasn't he? And that was Miles talking to Lincoln's public, getting their opinion on beards and what they know about Movember. Remember, if you want to get any more information on the stories you've been listening to or here on the Siren FM, uh, here on Siren FM, sorry, you can visit our website at www.sirenonline.co.uk. And to put it into the show, I'd like to say one more big thank you to Angie Parton for coming yeah. in and talking to us. Thank you. And we're going to leave you with a, a last song from the Beards called No Beard, No Good. We hope no you have enjoyed beard, our show. show. No good. There's not enough beards in my neighborhood And you can tell me you can't I know that you could You've got no beard in your whore No good No Well, there's a beardless man in the flat next door I've never spoken to him before And I never will Until he grows a beard and there's a fearless man in the flat below I ignore him when he says hello And I always will Until he grows a beard Until he grows a beard No beard, no good There's not enough beards in my neighborhood And you can tell me you can't I know that you could You've got no beard in your whore No good Well, there's a beardless boy playing in the street. I pass him and I spit at his feet. It's his own fault. He should have had a beard. And there's a beardless girl. I broke her heart. I also keyed her car. It's her own fault. She should have had a beard. She should have had a beard. No beard. No good There's not enough beards in my neighborhood And you can tell me you can't I know that you could You've got no beard in your whore No good No good Well, there's a beardless banker He calls me on the phone He asks me to pay back my loan But I won't Not until he grows a beard and there's a beardless man, he calls me son He asks me to dinner, but I never come And I won't, not until he grows a beard Until he grows a beard No beard, no good There's not enough beards in my neighborhood And he can tell me you can't well, I know that you're good, you've got no beard And therefore, no
And what a brilliant band those bearded fellows are. That was the beards with no beard, no good. Um, just before we go, uh, I would like to actually ask Ryan what his favourite kind of beard is. I'd have to go with the, the full long beard what, going the from, the, the, from the sideburns, going down onto the big long beard, going to a nice triangle, maybe have a good moustache that whipping up on a good old curly <laughs> bit. What about uh, yours, Dawson? Um, I think a plain and simple soul patch, mate. Oh, the sun. Lovely. Subtle, but effective. But, but effective. And also, I think it's the only thing I could ever pull off. I can't really actually grow facial hair. <laughs> it's that's both of us It's quite ironic. Boat. Yeah, I was about to say, but it's quite ironic. We're, we're presenting a, a bearded radio show and we can't even grow facial hair. Which is, which is quite <laughs> upsetting. Um, but if you'd like to find out any more about today's show, you can visit the Siren website, which is www.sirenonline.co.uk. Um... I'd also like to thank Angie Parton for coming in from Lincolnshire's Health Trust and talking to us and giving the listeners something more, um, obviously something to um, follow by. And if they need any help with testicular cancer or prostate cancer, they know exactly where to go now. Um, Dawson. Yes, uh, and that's it. Uh, that's, that's the Five O'Clock Shadow. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Dawson. And I'm Ryan. And you have been listening to Five O'Clock Shadow on Siren 107.3 FM. Three FM, three FM, three FM.